I have looked at a bunch of terminal file managers on this channel, but for the most part, they all end up being of the same general style, some even having basically the same interface. What I'm talking about is that Ranger sort of style where you have two or three panes, you move around by using Vim keys, and I feel like this is a really good style if you don't really want something very specific. If you just want a general terminal file manager, this is a really good way to get into them. But this isn't the only type of terminal file manager out there. Today we're looking at another one, this one is called XPLR, and I've used this term very lightly in the past, but I feel like this is by far the most customizable terminal file manager I have ever seen. Basically everything in this application can be customized. Now using the application is fairly straightforward, I'll get more into it in just a bit, but if you've used something like Ranger before, most of the key bindings are going to feel fairly familiar, you won't need to do that much messing around to really get the feel for the application. And one thing that is nice about this, because you don't have two panes for the file manager part, we can have extra things off to the right hand side here, so we have this selection window, when we go and say press space to select these here, it's going to list out the things you actually have selected. Then off to the bottom corner here, we have the help window, and this shows you the keys you can press to do any bindings. Like you would have in something like LF, where if you go and press G, it'll show you a list of keys you can press alongside G. If we do the same thing over here, it'll show you the keys you can press after G to do some sort of action. What makes this application special is to do its configuration and make that configuration portable. This ships with a version of Lua JIT. Previously it was being configured by using Bash. The problem with Bash though is they wanted to make it work nicely over on Windows as well, and you can't exactly use Bash to do that. This basically means that to configure the application, it's going to be done with Lua programming, the same way you would configure something like Awesome WM. Now you don't need to know Lua to actually do basic configuration, but if you want to add some more advanced stuff, knowing how to program in Lua can be really, really helpful. If all you're trying to do is configure colors or configure icons, basically it amounts to changing some variables and you'll be good to go. Now this is the default configuration that you can download alongside the application and I would highly recommend going and downloading this because trying to work out what all of the variables need to be called can be a bit of a challenge, so it just makes it easier to have all of them inside of the file as you actually start. This does mean that the file is going to be 2100 lines long, but it's a price I'm willing to pay. When I said that everything can be configured in here, I actually meant everything. The reason why there are so many lines is because basically everything on the Rust backend has a mapping on this Lua side, allowing you to modify everything that goes on with the application without having to go and basically recompile it like you would with something like a suckless application. So one obvious thing to go and modify is something like the keybinds. Now, the keybinds work in a very, very strict layer system, unlike, say, in Ranger and LF, where the layer system is more implied. So this right here is the default layer. These are the keys you see when you first open up the application, or you've pressed no other keys in a sequence. So for example, let's say the G binding, that is usually gonna be used for things like going to a directory or in the case of opening up a file, it's also used for that. Now, in that binding, this basically doesn't actually do anything itself, it actually just switches your mode over to the go to mode, and then the binding on the go to mode is what's actually going to do the functionality. One thing to note about this very strict layer system is every single key in the application is going to be operating under this system. So if you want to do something like quit out of the application, quit does need to be inside of that layer, otherwise you need to go back to a different layer. Or if you want to say, move up and down through the list of items, that does need to be inside of that layer, or it will not work. So generally what you're going to be doing is going into a layer to perform an action, and then once that action is done, leaving the layer. But the nice thing about these layers is it makes it very easy to repeat actions. So let's say I wanted to do something like making a file. So if I wanted to do that, I can go and press the colon button to go into action mode. Then I can press C to go into create mode. And then F will take me into file mode. So from here, I can go and create a file. And when I create that file, you'll notice it doesn't throw me back to default mode, it throws me back into the file prompt. So I can go make another file here, and another one, and another one, and another one. I can just keep doing this all day, and when I actually want to stop making files, then I can go and leave the file mode and be done with that. 
Unlike in something like Ranger and LF, where if I wanted to make a file, let's say I have it on the same binding, so colon CF. I would have to press colon CF every time I wanted to make a new file. You can also completely configure the layout as well. Let's say you don't like that the file section is taking up so much of the screen and you want it to take up less horizontal space. So the way that layouts are split up in this application is it's split up into two horizontal sections. So this is section one, this is section two, and these horizontal sections are split up into vertical sections. So this one has three vertical sections, this one has two. So if we go and change the horizontal width of the two sections, that should go and solve our problem. Let's make this one 40% and then this one 60%. And if we go and restart the application now, as we'll notice, this section is way smaller. And let's say I want to swap these two around. So I have the help menu here and the file table here. So the file table is just called table. This is going to be inside of the split section. So let's go and change this one over to over to help menu. So change that to help menu and then change this one over here to table. And that should achieve what we're trying to do. So if we go and restart the application again now. As we can see, it's gone and done that. So you can completely change how this application actually looks. And that's only scratching the surface. You can add in no data to this section. You can change the names of these headers. You can change the colors of everything in here. You can add icons. You can create a new section that has some sort of new data. Basically anything you want can be done in this configuration. I just want to briefly go over a couple of the default key bindings. So if we press GG, that's going to take us to the top. Capital G will take us to the bottom, like you'd expect from any sort of Vim-inspired client. We can also go and press slash to do a search. This search doesn't work exactly the way I like it, but it works well enough. So if I search for something like .config, it does basically a filtered search. If we then go and press enter, it'll jump us to that thing we've searched for. The way things like LF work is... Basically, you search for stuff, and then like in Vim, you can end between them. I think this makes more sense. I'm just not really used to it. I mentioned the action menu before when it comes to creating a file, but it can be used for other things as well. Things like pressing colon and an exclamation mark, which will take you to a shell. So if you want to do stuff in your terminal outside of the application, but you don't want to go and close the application, this can be incredibly useful. Other things you can do include jumping to an index. Let's say I want to go to index... 25, which I can't actually see on the screen, but if I type that out and then press enter, it will jump us directly to that. It is kind of a heavy way to do commands like that, but it's done like that to make sure you're avoiding any clashes. Now, one really weird thing is the way you open up files. So by default, it's going to use whatever MIME types you've set up on your system. So let's say I want to go and open up, I don't know, this, uh, this .z Lua, for example. If we press G, what we're going to see is there's an open in GUI. What this basically does is opens up with one of those MIME types. In this case, it's going to open up another Alacrity window and open up NeoVim. But if you don't have your MIME types configured correctly, that isn't going to work properly. And from what I've noticed, there's no built-in way to go and set custom MIME types for the application. Obviously, you could go and write a function to do that, but... I would suggest making sure your system MIME types are just working nicely. One thing that did confuse me when I first started using this is doing things like copy and pasting. So in this application, there's no idea of copying. There's only pasting. So when you go and select something, let's say I want to go and copy these two files here. We first have to go and select them. Then let's go into the place we want to copy them to. Let's say in my to convert directory. If I go into the action menu with colon, then go into the selection menu with S, then as we'll see, there is a copy here. If I press C, that will then give me a prompt to go and copy those. Those files now get copied. It's a bit of a weird way, but I feel like it makes sense. It's just weird not having an explicit copy. That's pretty much it for the general functionality, but an application like this lives and dies on the quality of its documentation. The reason why Awesome WM is so easy to use is because everything you could ever want to configure has a paragraph or at least a sentence explaining what it is and how to use it. Now, in this case, there is some documentation, but because XPLR is still very much in development and it's still actually a really new application, there's not really that much in the way of documentation. I've looked through all of this, 
and I haven't been able to find a breakdown of all of the variables. You sort of have to mess with them and just guess, basically. Some parts are fairly well documented, like key bindings, pretty straightforward how this is done. The documentation actually is up to scratch here, but a lot of it is really missing. One really great example of this is with the pipe section, which from what I understand, you can pipe data into XPLR to control it in some sort of way, but it's not really that well documented. While we have the variables we can actually send stuff to, it doesn't really show you the format stuff needs to be in, what you can actually send, what it can actually be used for. I feel like this stuff is incredibly important. I know that, like, the suckless utilities get away with having basically no documentation, but I feel like for something like this, it is absolutely crucial. I think this would be an absolutely amazing application once the documentation actually is up to scratch. The closest you get to extensive documentation on the Lua API is any of the sections that link you to the documentation for the Rust backend. Now, this is okay in the meantime until you actually get something that is good set up for the Lua API. But having a setup like this really doesn't work in the long term, especially because sections of the Rust API are named differently to what you see on the Lua side. And another problem with the documentation is previously the configuration was being done with a YAML file, and because of that, a lot of the stuff they have in their wiki is in the YAML format. Now, they have been slowly updating some of these into the format it's supposed to be in now, but as it stands, it is kind of confusing. They do have a script to go and convert the YAML stuff into Lua, so hopefully it is getting fixed very soon. I will absolutely be keeping my eye on this file manager because it is still very much in development. The repo only has 275 commits on the main branch, and even though it says it has 71 releases, it doesn't really have 71 releases. These are the sort of people who like to make a new release every time there is some minor update. So if we go back four days ago, release, 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 uh, release, release, another release. Uh, so there was, what, five, six releases on the same day. So really, there's more like 10 releases at most. I expect this application to go through some heavy changes. I hope that someone comes around who wants to go and document the entire API. That sounds like an absolute mess to do, especially as the API does go and change. Maybe as it starts to stabilize more, they will actually work more on that. But... This is a really cool file manager, and if you care about modifying stuff and you want to do it with Lua, this is one of the better options out there. If you like the idea of this application, please go and check it out, and please go and support the developers. I want to see something like this actually become a really cool file manager. So that's going to be everything for me, and before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andrew Nathan, David Carl, Mitchell Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie Joseph, Josh, Peter D. Steven, Tease Through, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, the link's down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a live streaming channel where I play games twice a week. That is Brody Robertson Plays, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That'll be everything for me, and I'm out.